Now, blood types are a phenotype that is caused by multiple alleles. Multiple alleles um, contribute to the phenotypes that you see when we're talking about blood typing. I'm gonna start by explaining to you what blood typing is. Like, what is your blood type? And I, if, we were, if we were sharing space, I totally would ask you if anybody knows your blood type. Um, I try to give blood as often as possible. It's the easiest form of organ transplant because I just remake the blood that I give away every eight weeks, which is awesome. And it's super beneficial to folks who um, need blood. So I, this is super interesting, but most of us or many of us don't know our blood type and don't really know what blood typing is. So let's um, look at what, our, what, it was, what is blood type. Let's start with uh, the phenotype for blood. And I love you. And I have to draw this. It doesn't matter how many times I have talked about blood typing. I have to draw my blood cells in order to remember the story of what causes the blood type phenotype. We have four possible phenotypes when it comes to blood type. And I say we have four possible phenotypes. If anybody out there is like a blood giving hero, you probably know that there actually is another thing involved in blood typing. I'm not gonna talk about that other thing. I'm gonna just stick to this, but look at this. We have type A blood, type, do I have to write type every time or can I say type B? Type AB and type O. Does anybody know what the thing is that I'm missing that would increase the number of possible phenotypes we have here? It's the RH factor. And the RH factor adds a plus or a minus to your blood type. So actually, and I, I said I wasn't gonna do this, but I can't help it. Um, a, type A blood can be A positive or A negative, where the positive and the negative piece is the RH factor. For some reason, they don't use RH factor in genetics problems. And I don't know why, because I have heard that it is coded for by a gene. We're just gonna leave that over there for we can talk about it when we do physio and come take physio with me because it's really fun to talk about blood type in that class. So if you hear about RH factors or pluses and negatives, that's what it, it means. But what is the actual phenotype of a type A blood human? Well, they have these things called antigens embedded in their cell membranes. Now think about this. These antigens are proteins and I make them with little A's on the end so that I can remember that those are A antigens. And antigens are just proteins. Which means, how do we get proteins, home kids? Proteins are coded for by genes. So we need a gene, the blood type gene, to tell us what kind of antigens to build proteins to embed in the cell membrane of a red blood cell. What kind of antigens do you anticipate are found in type B blood? It was an easy one, wasn't it? Uh, blood typing is easy. Please tell my physio students that it is easy. <laughs> it's not so easy, but that's okay. We will, if it makes you feel like it's easy, we will be very happy about that. What about type AB blood? You are correct, because I can hear you. We have both A and B antigens embedded in the cell membrane. And what about type O? What do you think is going on there? <clears throat> that, that is going on there with type O blood. There are no antigens embedded in the cell membrane. 
So the next question, now we're talking about multiple alleles. Blood typing, the AB blood types are coded for by one gene. But all of our other situations have had two alleles, right? We've had a recessive allele and a dominant allele. Well, in the case of blood types, we actually have three possible alleles. And I'm gonna throw those possible alleles down here. I'm gonna throw the possible alleles way down here. The gene, I have no idea why, is called the I gene. Cool. And the IA allele codes for A antigens to be embedded in the cell membrane. The sun is coming out. Can you, can you tell that the sun is coming out? And it like there's raindrops coming out of the redwood trees right now. And I'm like, it's super pretty out there. And we're talking about blood typing, which is like my favorite thing. Oh, everything's my favorite thing, huh? What other allele? If you had to guess another allele, what's another allele? The IB allele. Look at how I'm making the, um, the different alleles. I've got the gene and the allele I'm doing like this little subscript. I'm doing capital I's. What does that tell you? Hint, hint. There are no hints on here for what I'm trying to tell you. It was in the last lecture that your hint is. Is that the end of the story? No, because of course we have a recessive I allele. So we have, there is a recessive I allele possible. Now, push pause. You can totally do this. What do you think predict the possible genotypes that give rise to each one of these phenotypes. So I'm gonna make you a chart, genotypes, because there's gonna be multiple genotypes. And once we do the genotypes, you will see how this is actually an example of co-dominance. I gave it away. We do have multiple alleles. That's what we're talking about today. But you'll see anyway the co-dominance part. Okay, guess the genotypes. You pushed pause. Now you're gonna check yourself and see if you're right. Well, if we have A antigens, I'm assuming that the IA allele is necessary in order to get type A blood, and I am assuming correct. Now, I could be homozygous IA. That makes sense that that would lead to a full expression of type A blood. What's another possibility? Gotta have the IA. You could have the little I recessive allele and still fully express complete dominance in this, mm, I gotta be careful of that. In this case, this heterozygote is fully expressing the A type A blood, okay? But we have two possible genotypes. That's gonna lead to some complicated problems that you're gonna solve. Okay, what about B? What are our possible genotypes that lead to type B blood? Uh-huh, I know that you knew that. Or, I know you knew that too, good job. What about AB? Blood. What are you going to do? Got to have the IA to give rise to the A antigens. Got to have the IB to give rise to the B antigens. This is why blood typing is an example of codominance because you fully express A type A blood and type B blood at the same time, hence type A B blood. What is the genotype of someone who has type O blood? Homozygous recessive, no antigens on their red blood cells. How you feeling about that? That is, that's super easy. 
That's super clear. The only thing that's weird about this is now we have three possible alleles to pick from and our dominant alleles express codominantly. So they share the load and they're both fully expressed. It's not like you have sort of A blood and sort of B blood. That would be incomplete dominance. Like you have this, this intermediate phenotype that's not what you have. You have both. You are functionally A and B, and they call it AB blood. Okay, how are you feeling? Be nice to yourself. We're gonna keep this exact same picture, and in the next section, we're gonna talk about a concept called epistasis. Here we're looking at all the different ways that we can have complexity. There's a a phenomenon called, called epistasis that we can see in blood typing that leads to phenotypic complexity that can be quite unexpected.